Hi, this is Dr. Don. In my last video, I showed you how to set up the formulas in an Excel spreadsheet for the mean absolute deviation, MAD, mean squared error, MSE, root mean square error, or MSE, and mean absolute percentage error, MAPE. The example I used was just a hypothetical set of numbers that really did not have a basis in fact. But this table shows that the four error metrics range from 0.247 to 1.33. Are the metrics comparable? Will MAPE always be larger than MAD? Well, it turns out that each of the error metrics has its strengths and weaknesses. MAD and RMSC are both scale dependent. By that I mean the size of the metric as related to the units of the forecast values. Let's take a look at an example. In this second version of the forecast, I assume that the actual forecast was in US dollars and I converted those US dollars into pesos using a conversion rate of 19.52 pesos to the dollar. And if you look at the underlying formulas, you can see that I just took the actual from the original, multiplied it by that conversion rate to give a new value. I did the same thing for the forecast, just multiplied the original forecast times that conversion rate to get it into pesos. But look what happened to our metrics, our error metrics. The MAD and the MSE and the RMSE all greatly increase. The MAD and the RMSE increase 19.52 times, which is logical since that was the conversion rate. But the MSE, the mean squared error, since it's dealing with squares, jumped to 38103 times as large as the original. And you would look at these error metrics and you would say, wow, this second forecast has much larger errors than the first forecast. Therefore, the second forecast is not as good. But you would be wrong because, again, those metrics are based on scale, the units. If you look at MAPE, MAPE, which is unit-free, did not change. It's still 1.3. 29 and the second one 1.329 in the first. So if you're dealing with things that have different units, for example, if you were dealing with two companies or two forecasts, one was forecasting sales and was using units of uh, 1,000 and the second was using units of 1 million, you would need to be aware that you would should be using MAPE to compare those two forecasts and not MAD, MSC, and RMSC. Just to underscore that point, I'm going to change this conversion rate to 1177.01, which is the conversion rate for Iraqi dinars to dollars. After I recalculate the sheet, you can see again that the MAD, the MSC, and the RMSC all just really jumped. The MSC up to 1.385 million times as large as the original value for the mean square. And the others, of course, are over a thousand times as large. Just to, to underscore again that when you're dealing with forecasts with different units, particularly if they're, you know, scale that much different, use the MAPE to compare those forecasts. Another concern that you need to have when you're evaluating forecasts using error metrics is to look out for outliers or disruptions, discontinuities in your, your data. Here in this example, in the uh, second table, I've just changed the last value of our 12 periods from 31.9 to 40, which is not an unreasonable disruption, but it is, is a pretty good size change. And you can see our forecast has a pretty good difference error there now of 8.15. And that, of course, snowballs into our error metrics. All of them change, 
the MAD, the MSC, the RMSC, and the MAPE, they all increase because now we've got this greater error in there. But look at how the mean square error jumps. 23 times as large, while the others are only 3 to 5 times larger for that given error. That's because the mean square error, of course, squares the error. When you get your data, you should scan it, plot it, and look for possible outliers and discontinuities. And if you see them, consider using these other three, the MAD, the MSC, excuse me, the MAD, the RMSC, and the MAPE instead of the mean square when you have outliers. So far in the examples I've shown you, MAPE appears to be the most stable metric and is not as subject to disruptions due to outliers or due to differences in scale or units in the forecasts. But MAPE is not always an appropriate metric to use. Because MAPE involves a division, it should only be used on data that is measured on a ratio scale. And if you remember back to statistics and math, a ratio scale is a scale that has a real zero. For example, you can usually tell if your data is a ratio scale by converting it to some other unit, such as we did when we converted dollars to pesos and looking for strange things to happen in your MAPE. Here in our example, because this is a true ratio scale, there uh, is a true zero, we didn't get any funny things to happen with our MAPE. But let's look at what happens if we are trying to evaluate a forecast that is based on interval data instead of ratio data. Here I have assumed the original data was temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and converted it degrees Celsius using the formula we all learned in high school F minus 32 times 5 ninths equal degrees centigrade. Notice that MAD, MSC, and RMSC did not change substantially. They changed a little bit, but they're still you know, fairly close to those values. But look at what happened to MAPE. MAPE increased 61 times. 61 times as large just because we converted from Fahrenheit to centigrade Celsius. And MAPE has a, another important weakness. Since you, you are dividing by the actual value, if the actual value gets very, very small, MAPE becomes unstable and that it grows very large very quickly. Look at these 11th and 12th periods here in the Celsius table. They've gotten very small, minus 0.1 down to minus 0.01. And you can see that our MAPE, our absolute value of the er errors divided by the actual values, jumps from 1 tenth to 3.8 to 4.75. A big jump as this actual value gets small. But let's just experiment there. What if I put in 0.001? That one row jumps, but look what MAPE did. MAPE increased 438 times over the original value for that very small value of the actual. And that's my point. It's, it's just based on math. As this actual value gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero, then this MAPE is going to get bigger and bigger, which makes the overall MAPE get unsteady. The final thing I wanted to mention about MAPE is that it can act a little strange with negative values of error. In our original example here, I went back and I changed the actual and forecast for these two periods so that they had a positive difference of 3.155 in the 6th period and a negative difference of minus 3.155. When we extend this over and we calculate the, the mate for each of those, you see that although it's small in my example here, the mate for the positive 3.155 is smaller than the negative 3.155. 
So if you have a lot of negative errors in your models, be careful about that. This may appear to be pretty small, but if you've got a lot of them, then those negatives can add up and distort your MAPE. Just be aware of that when you're evaluating your forecast using MAD, MSE, RMSE, and MAPE. Each of them have strengths. Each of them have weaknesses, and you need to be aware of those. Hope this helps.